she said, oh, no, Mama, not like that. And she got out of the sleeping bag, and she crawled across her sister, and she got right in front of me, and she threw her arms around me, and she gave me a great big kiss, right smack on my lips. And she said, there, Mama, that's the way it should be. And I praise God for that lovely, lovely memory, because that was the last time that I ever saw my little girl. I really allowed myself to get in touch with my rage. And as my husband and I were getting into bed, I said, even if the kidnapper were to bring Susie back alive and well this moment, I could kill him for what he has done to my family. And so I asked God to help change my heart. And I realized that to kill somebody in my little girl's name would be to violate and profane the goodness and sweetness and beauty of who she was. That I didn't honor her by becoming that which I deplored, somebody who kills people. If it were to happen to one of my family members, I would be for it. That's normal for the family to feel that way. In the process, in the healing process, there is a vacillation, and that's normal. It would have been something wrong with me if I was not outraged. And victim families have every right to the normal, valid human response of rage and anger and even a desire for revenge. But to legislate that same kind of gut-level desire for bloodthirsty revenge in the name of the death penalty will have the same deleterious effect on us as a society as it does on individuals. It degrades us, it dehumanizes us, it debilitates us. Civilized society, then our laws should call us to a higher moral principle. They oppose the death penalty. I'm in favor of the death penalty. We'll debate that issue next on Take a Stand with Adam McManus. I find that oftentimes in um, some Christian circles that there is a response to uh, my situation that I would have to characterize as unchristian. Adrian, what are your thoughts? Oh, I'm, I'm for it. And what specific biblical... A uh, verse or scripture or principle can you cite that supports your position in favor of the death penalty? Leviticus 24:17. If anyone slays a human being, he shall be put to death. He called himself a Christian, and he wanted to justify the use of the death penalty. And I thought it was very interesting that all the Bible quotes that he could find, all the sources in scripture, were from the Old Testament. What scriptural uh, verses can you cite that? favor your opposition to the death penalty? Well, I guess you could start out with the Sermon on the Mount. He said to love those that hate you. They are looking for uh, a way to retain anger and a desire for revenge and have it supported and affirmed by uh, Scripture. You're distorting Scripture and you're trying to put this liberal spin on it that it's just a matter of interpretation. Uh, when I look at Scripture, I see a God who loves us, who forgives us, who picks us up every time we screw up. Go ahead, you're on the air. What you have, uh, Adam, is a guest who selectively quotes scripture and misinterprets it and twists it to prove her own agenda. And, you know, that is, that, that is despicable to me. You either adhere to the principles of scripture or you do not. Don't try to bend them and twist them to suit your agenda, madam. It saddens me when I know that there's a whole segment of Christianity out there who feel that it's okay to seek vengeance. For me as a Christian, God says, vengeance is mine, and I'm perfectly happy to leave it in God's hands. This is our fifth journey of hope, and it's about time that we got here to Texas. And we're here in Texas. We're going to mess with Texas. We are going to make a difference. Thank you. Texas has executed over 152 people uh, since the death penalty has been reinstated. Uh, that's about a third of the executions that's taken place in our country. The state killings, we are continuing a cycle of violence. Uh, somebody kills and so the state kills and it just continues. And we're saying that that cycle of violence needs to be broken and it needs to start with the state. The state is the one that needs to set the example. I'm for the death penalty all the way. <laughs> so wow. Acts 529. Okay, can't argue with that if you aren't going to change your mind. But right. I would ask you, it's an educational thing. It's really unfair, it's discriminatory. Now well, I'm not a Christian anyway, so right. I'm a Buddhist. So in oh. Buddhism, well, we Muhammad's accept... not going to save you. Okay. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Well, that's unfortunate, yeah. because that's we should truth. be more inclusive. If I'm 25 years old, 26, I kill a, a, a 
baby. I should be killed. Why am I gonna be free and kill someone else? We don't want people free. We want them behind bars. 99% of the people in this country that kill don't receive the death penalty. The way I see it, you kill, you should be killed. The what? Bible says. If you kill them, you take away the possibility of their salvation. The only killing I'm against is abortion. He doesn't want babies killed, the, un the unborn. He just wants adults killed. That's all. There was supposed to be an execution tonight, and there was not. <laughs> Next highest on our agenda list is, I'm told we don't have hot water here. It's a journey, yeah. and welcome to it. <laughs> <laughs> Being from a family of, full of law enforcement uh, officers, I am for the death penalty. I know there's a lot of heinous crimes out there, and that's how I feel right now. Maybe this journey of hope, they can change my mind, or give me some more insight, because I am not a victim. I've never had, fortunately, anybody murdered in my family. I am very much in favor of the death penalty, and I, as a matter of fact, believe it needs to be used more often than it is to be effective. I am a supporter of the death penalty. Um, I'm a police officer. I've got friends and family that are also police officers, and I, too, am a victim. My uncle was murdered when I was a small child. The death penalty wouldn't have prevented mom's murder. It certainly can't bring her back. If that person gets out and kills another life, and you have saved one life by stopping that person... You're dehumanizing them just like they dehumanized their victims. Why the high horse attitude that we're better than they are? If they can commit the same heinous crimes, what right do we not have to expect the like in return? Because we're going down to their level. Now, if I'm killed in the line of duty, you people scare me. I want Dan in my corner. I don't question your right to forgive for yourself and your family. I do question your right, however, for you to forgive for the rest of society. I asked the FBI not to give him the death penalty. I'm always a little uncomfortable when I'm asked to be on a panel discussion with murder victim family members who are not in the same position that I am. Sometimes even we can violate them by calling them to an attitude of forgiveness and a stance against the death penalty before they're ready to move into that. After my daughter was murdered, I thought I was going to go crazy. My family was just torn apart. Lori was my only child. I will never hear anybody call me mom. I will never be a grandma. My life stopped. My dad wasn't there for me when I turned 21 last month. He's not going to be there for me when I graduate college. He's not going to be there when I get married. And I, don't, I wouldn't have been satisfied with life imprisonment. I'm sorry. I don't care if Texas had it or not. I would not be satisfied because he can still live. My heart aches you know, for these victim the families shooter, who've been killer. made to believe at a time when they were utterly vulnerable, inconsolate in their grief, and that uh, death penalty was held out for them as the way to get healing. Healing is a process, but too often we look for simple fixes. And this was said to me two or three days after Shar was shot. George, we'll find him, we'll fry him till his eyeballs pop out. My response to that was, yes, I wanted the pain to stop. One of the things that disturbed me when we came in here is we were put on different sides of the table. We're not on different sides. I feel the only thing I can do is to share my own journey. And, and hold that out to them and hope that they can see some inner peace in me and some healedness in me that will evoke a desire in them to want the same and to affirm their pain, their right to their pain and their loss and to say that I've been there. Having a needle put in your arm and going into a nice peaceful sleep, that is nothing compared to putting a gun to our family's heads. They die with someone there watching them. They let my dad die on the street. Then what they ought to do, get the electric chair, put on the television and show when the, they pull the switch and all the electricity to go through their bodies of people, the punks out there can see that. And that's the only thing that's gonna keep, keep people from going killing somebody else.